time to update us on what God is using them to do. Uh, maybe even take some time to share with us what God is the place where God's brought your parents. I'm sure there's plenty in here that would like to hear about Brother Jimmy and, and, uh, and Miss Nancy as well. We will pray for them. We continue to pray for them. And thank God the Lord has allowed us to continue to support them, and we love them so much. So Amen. if you have anything you might want to share about that, I'm sure the church would like to know. Just share with us what God's put on your heart. Just a little bit of an update. And uh, then you, as soon as you give us the update preaching, you just take off preaching. Amen? Amen. Yeah. How many of you are going to back Brother Rose tonight as he preaches? Let's not do what happened this morning. I don't want him to have to call you down and say, hey, don't die on this, this evening. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I had to do that. I had to do that. Everybody got sleepy on me there for a little while this morning. And I had a group come in from vacation, got in late last night, and started to get a little sleepy. Amen. Uh, but let's not do that. We had opportunity to get plenty of food and had opportunity to get a nap this afternoon. And, and uh, so if, it, if you needed that, you should have taken the opportunity. Let's not die on the preacher tonight, amen. amen. Let's back him as he preaches. Brother Rose, it's such a joy to have you this evening. Preach to us as God's will. Put the, Lord, the Lord's message on your heart. We look forward amen. to hearing from you. Well, amen. How many are glad to be here? Say amen. 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 Lord, it's good to be back after many years. And uh, we're so grateful uh, for this church that has supported us for many years, many, many, many years, and uh, we're so grateful. Uh, we can't express our gratitude. We do pray for you and thank the Lord for you, and I know the Lord's going to give a double portion uh, for this church that has supported us for many years. My wife, will you please stand? Uh, this is my wife of almost 28 years yeah. Amen. Amen. and uh, my son is 21 he's married and he gave me him and his wife gave me one of the greatest things in the world a grandson Amen. Amen. can you believe we look so young to be grandparents I tell you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, especially my wife, <laughs> but uh, I, I'm just kidding. But uh, we might look it, but we don't feel it. <laughs> uh, but uh, we've had people say, "Your grandparents? Oh no, surely not." But uh, I'm so glad that the Lord has blessed our family. Amen. Before I give an update of the ministry, uh, just let me tell you a few minutes about Dad and Mom. <clears throat> Uh, mother uh, and dad are, mo in fact, today is mother's uh, 79th birthday. Wow. Today. And uh, we're going to celebrate that tomorrow with her. But uh, uh, dad is on hemodialysis uh, three times a week. He was on peritoneal dialysis uh, for a year and a half. And peritoneal is the one they go through the stomach and they inject all night uh, fluids in them to clean the system. But uh, that didn't work too good after a year and a half. We had to be hospitalized uh, with a lot of troubles. And uh, then we were able to convince him. Somebody had put in his head that when you go on to hemodialysis, you're at the end of the road. <coughs> But we had been praying that the Lord would open his heart because that's not true. Uh, uh, I've had doctors tell me personally, uh, Mr. Rose, that is not true. I've seen people live 30 years on hemodialysis. Uh, but it came to the point that the doctor said there's no other choice. You need to go on hemodialysis, and we praise the Lord for that. But Dad, being so sick, uh, during the peritoneal, he was only able to lay, and so that is not walking uh, now. So you pray for him that God would give him. He has no strength in his legs, and uh, so he is in a, a rehab now, uh, being taken care of. And then mother, uh, last year, was it last year she had a knee replacement? Last year, she had a knee replacement. Uh, she didn't want to do that. And uh, so my 
my wife started going to the doctor with her and uh, the doctor said uh, you need to you need to have surgery and my mother said oh you know I'll, I'll make so my wife said no you need to have surgery and so we convinced her my wife mainly convinced her to have this surgery she did good for a while but now she's really struggling to walk and uh, she called me last night when I was in Columbia crying. She had so much pain in her legs. Would you please pray for her also? Uh, <clears throat> that is the reason we had to come home because I promised my dad and my mother many years ago that I would stay on the field until they called me and told me that they needed my help. And the reason uh, two years ago my dad called me and said, son, I need your help uh, is because my brother, his wife uh, in, the, in Greenville, she had dementia uh, in the worst stage and she just passed away uh, two weeks ago. And uh, so we came home wondering what the Lord had for us here in the States. But I'll tell you that in just a few minutes. Uh, in Brazil, in our mother church, when dad left in 2001, the church voted us in to be their pastor <clears throat> and continue the ministries uh, that we had in this church. And the reason I'm telling you all this, because just like the preacher said, this is an extension of, of your ministry that's all I that's all I and I believe that with all my heart yeah. and uh, uh, a lot of times you don't know what's going on but the Lord has blessed in many ways in Brazil in our churches there in our mother church when we took over uh, our church was supporting 50 missionaries uh, around the world and then we took over the ministry and stayed there till 2008. And my dream as their leader was that one day we would reach the point that we were giving more to missions than our time. And I kept pushing that. I kept pushing that and praying, Lord, uh, would you allow me to see that happen? And our last year there, the Lord allowed us to reach 100 missionaries that we support wow. now and uh, giving more to missions than our time. And uh, so I was, I was so blessed with that. And all of this is because you give so we can go. Amen. Because my dad has always taught me, he said this one time, he said, son, if we go into churches and encourage churches to give to missions and we as missionaries go to the field and don't teach our people to give to missions, we're hypocrites. We're hypocrites. And so we begin to teach our people to give to missions. And uh, that is the, the, the greatest goal of ours was that our church would get a vision for faith promise in our church uh, till today is giving greatly to missions and I thank the Lord for that but also in this church we started a Christian school uh, there and what a blessing it was but it was hard work when we left in 2008 I told my wife only if the Lord shows me very clearly I will never start a Christian school again. <laughs> I mean, it has to be something falling right in front of me. <laughs> but it was hard work. But today, the Lord has blessed. We have over 200 students in our Christian school. They're going faithfully. Uh, and I praise the Lord for that. Uh, we started the Bearing Precious Seed Ministry in this church. Distribution of Bibles. We received a container of 25,000 Bibles. We were able to distribute these Bibles all over Brazil, especially in the north of Brazil. And we're trying to do that again. Lord willing, 
Uh, we already have uh, 3,600 Bibles that was donated to us and 25,000 German Romans. You pray that God will allow us to send them. We want to send them north of Brazil because it's the most needy area right now for Bibles. And so the Lord allowed that. And then also we started the, the Rock of Ages ministry in Brazil. Uh, and three men in our church, the Lord called them. Amen. And they are faithfully serving the Lord with Rock of Ages there in Brazil. Going every single day to the prisons and preaching the gospel. Amen. And when they came down, uh, one of the international directors came down. Uh, he said to me and my dad, I want to start a Rock of Ages ministry, but I, I want them to, to be out of the church here. I want this to be the representing church for Rock of Ages ministry. And uh, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm just right honest. I am scared to death to go into prison. I, I'm just honest. I might be big, but that's it. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the director would say, uh, let's go in and preach the gospel. And you be my translator. And I tried to do everything I could to get out of it. I got a meeting here. But one day he said, let's go. And what a blessing. We have a black young boy named John. He is skinny as a rail. And he goes into those prisons, and he goes into those cells. He calls those prisoners together like he dominates them or something. He said, it's time for service. And I'm like, oh, man, uh, I'm scared. But the Lord has called them, and we praise the Lord for uh, starting the Rock of Ages. I believe uh, now we have about five to six full-time missionaries. Amen that are going into prisons all over Brazil and preaching the gospel. Then after 2008, we went down south. My brother-in-law uh, took the ministry there, our mother church, and I went down south to a state that has 193 cities. State of St. Catherine, 193 cities. And there is only 13 fundamental Baptist churches in that whole state. Only 13. So there's 180 cities that have nothing. So we began to work there with a Brazilian, uh, Brazilian missionary. And uh, the Lord blessed. We were able to teach there at the church, preach and teach faith promise. And they built their faith promise up. But then after that, there was a small church that uh, the pastor left, and the Brazilian pastor uh, said, why don't you go over there and preach? And I kept telling him, I said, no, I'll, I'll just let you go over there. And he, he keeps saying, why don't you go over there and preach for the people? And I said, no, I'll just stay here at the, the main church. Well, he, he went a different route. He went to my wife. <laughs> he said, can you convince him to go preach over there? And I knew, I knew in my heart what was going to happen. I knew it. I was going to go there. I was going to put a burden upon my heart to those people. And I was going to be gone from that other church. And... Uh, that's exactly what happened. He regrets now that he told me to go over there. Uh, but the Lord led us there to that little church. It had gone down to about 10 people. We began to work there and present missions. And when I left last year, those dear people, our church, we had about 50 people Amen. supporting 22 missionaries Amen. around the world and still going strong. And today they support their own national pastor. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. And uh, then my dad asked us to come home. And we came home uh, wondering what the Lord wanted us to do. My pastor sat down with me. And he said, uh, what do you want to do? He had some offers, and I said, Pastor, my heart is in missions. I can't get my heart out of missions. 
And so uh, one day I was walking down the hall and uh, Dr. Aiken asked me, he said, can you meet me in my office? And you know, when a preacher says, can you meet me in my office? You think, what did I do? Uh, but he invited me to come in and said, would you consider coming with TBMI and working as an assistant director? And I said, uh, I'll pray about it. And, uh, but I told him, I don't want to be tied down here in America. That the Lord takes me back. I want to go many times during the year as the Lord provides to go back to Brazil because we have two national missionaries that are starting churches and we have become team uh, these two missionaries one is in the north and one is close to where our mother church is and we have teamed up with them and we are starting churches together we'll be going back in october and we'll be visiting a new city that has no fundamental baptist church and where we'll be starting our next church so I told Pastor Aiken, I said, I'll be glad to do it because Dr. Aiken is one of my heroes and it would be a dream to work side by side with him. Amen. And uh, so I was very happy to accept that position and uh, pray for us that the Lord will use us, uh, not only in Brazil, but the Lord has opened other doors in other countries for us to go and preach on missions. Uh, two months ago, I spent a whole week in Mexico preaching on missions and two young ladies surrendered to the mission field uh, there. And one might be coming to Tabernacle Bible College. And so we thank the Lord for that. And then uh, next year, uh, they would like for me to go back to Mexico and then uh, I've been invited to preach in India and pray that God will give us so we can go and uh, preach there. They just started a building there in India and the national pastor asked me, would you come and preach the inauguration of the church? And uh, what an honor, what an honor Amen. it would be for us to go. Pray that God would would give us uh, the funds. In fact, I mentioned this to Miss Starling today. We're we're looking for somebody that works uh, with the airline that could help us with buddy passes, uh, so we can go. Uh, we can go to other countries with not so much money because it costs so much for us to do that. And uh, please pray God would provide somebody uh, and that we could do that. It would help us so much if we could go to Brazil three, four times a year. India, I've been invited to go to North Korea. I've uh, been invited to go to uh, Mexico again and then Africa. I would like to go to all of them. But because of expenses, it's hard for us to do that. But if we had somebody that could partner up with us and help us with that, it would be great. Would you please pray for that, that God would provide somebody? I know he can. And also pray that uh, uh, God will provide the funds for us to go in October. It's going to cost about 2500 and we're just trying to raise that to be able to go to Brazil. We've got three revivals already set for us to preach there in Brazil. Pray that God will use us and give us the funds so we can go. If you have any questions after service, you, you can ask my wife. She will be glad to answer. <laughs> Amen. I was telling Preacher Starling today, uh, one friend of mine, he was in the pulpit and and uh, the pastor said, why don't you give some time for questions? And uh, so he said, does anybody got any questions? And the little boy raised his hand and he said, yes, sir. Go ahead and stand up and ask your question. 
Little boy got up, and this really happened. Little boy got up and said, do you know why my dad hates the preacher of this church? Can you imagine? <laughs> I hope that never happens to me. I just get down and leave. <laughs> but but uh, uh, so, if you have any questions, I know that wouldn't happen to you. Uh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, if you have any questions after service, be glad. I need somebody to loan me a watch, preacher. When the preacher gives you his watch, it's because he wants you to finish on time. Amen? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I came, I put my watch on yesterday to leave, and it's been stuck on 6 o'clock ever since. Amen? Uh, so I need something to go by. Uh, thank you again so much for this opportunity, and I hope that we can continue being a blessing uh, to you people. Next year, now I'm mentioning this everywhere. Next year, Tabernacle is doing a missions team to Brazil. If anybody is interested, uh, we would love for you to go with us. I know Pastor would love for you to go with us. If you're interested, let me know. We'll be visiting several ministries in Brazil. Pastor Logan will be preaching our missions conference in our mother church there. And I, have, I, I think it's going to be a tremendous blessing. Tremendous blessing. If you're interested, that would be such a tremendous investment uh, to go to Brazil. Second Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. If you would please stand. We'll read just one verse. <clears throat> and after that we'll have a word of prayer. And then um, after that you may be seated. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. And look what he says here. Not willing that, what? Any. Any. May I say something here? The Calvinists get confused on that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I tell you, when the Lord said, not willing that any, I don't think God chose some. Amen? And uh, I'm not here to preach about that, but I just thought I'd just insert that. <laughs> not willing that Amen. any should perish. But here's another little word. But that what? All. All. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. All should come to repentance. Amen. Father, thank you for the opportunity that you've given to us to preach. Lord, thank you for Preacher Lawson and his family. And we're so excited about his ministry here and his excitement and Lord we thank you so much for this precious church the Caldwell family the rest of the church and how they've been such a blessing to us through these years and Lord would you please bless them help preacher Caldwell as he is probably preaching right now would you please give him strength as he shares the word of God Thank you for all that you've done for us and help us to honor you and glorify you. Fill us with thy spirit. In your precious and holy name we ask you. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> you may or may not know this, but the words mission, missions, or missionary 
are not found in the Bible. In fact, the word rapture or trinity are not found in the Bible. And though they are not found in the Bible or not Bible words, they sure have become part of the Christian vocabulary. Oh, yeah. Though the word missions is not found in the Bible, but it sure is illustrated and commanded in Scripture. The Bible in its totality ascribes only one intention of God. That not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hudson Taylor said this, the Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. Amen. Right. Amen. A man said this, I have but one candle of life to burn. I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with lights. Amy Carmichael said this, You can give without loving but you cannot love without giving. John Stott said this, we must be global Christians with a global vision because our God is a global God. Amen. Amen. David Livingston said this, sympathy is no substitute for action. Our pastor in Greenville, he has a tremendous burden for missions. Pastor Logan, I was telling Brother Starling the other day, about four months ago, uh, we had been having missionaries come in, missionaries come in uh, from all over, and, and, and the deacons got together, and, and uh, we brought it, they brought it before the church, and our church took on 18 missionaries at one time there at Tabernacle. Boy, I tell you, we about had a shouting spell in that service just to know the burden. It's just like David Livingston said, sympathy is no substitute for action. One man said this, go, send, or disobey. Oswald Smith said this, no one has the right to hear the gospel twice while there remains someone who has not heard it once. That's right. Wow. Once. What is missions? The Bible says, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Why did he put that in the Bible? Why did God put that in the Bible? I believe he put that in the Bible, first of all, because missions is the heart of Christ. I used to tell our church in Brazil, I'd put my hand in my shirt, and I'd say this, I believe the heart of Christ goes like this. Missions, 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 yeah. missions, missions, missions. Because I believe the heart of Christ is missions. In John chapter 4, verse 4, you remember what Jesus said? He said this, and he must needs go through Samaria. There were two highways from Judea to the northern territory of Galilee, one is shorter than the other. Devout Jews avoided the route through Samaria and preferred the longer route than the journey among the people they did not like. But Jesus said he must. The must of our text was not a necessity imposed on geographical restrictions. The route through Samaria was a necessity, a necessary way because there was a needy woman there that needed Jesus. His heart was so filled with 
his love for the lost that he went the route the Jews didn't want to go. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. He said he must. David. Verse Timothy 2, 3 through 6 shows us, but in verse 4, it says, Who will have all men to be saved? Shows the heart of God. Bob Pierce, a world vision founder, said this, Let my heart be broken with the things that break God's heart. Boy, I tell you something, if anything breaks God's heart, is the situation of the world today. And oh, God does not want them to perish. God wants them to be saved. That's right. Amen. We need to have a vision for that. Amen. Missions is the heart of God. Secondly, missions is the hope of the condemned. Right. Listen to me. Without the gospel, man is helpless, hopeless, and hell bound. Right. That's right. Amen. And though the lost here may not recognize it, the doomed in hell knows. Wow. Yep. The ones in hell, they know that the hope of this world is missions. Right. Yeah. Right. You want proof of that? Go with me to Luke chapter 16. I want to show you something here. Luke chapter 16. Look at verse 22 through 24. It came to pass that the beggar died. Luke 16, 22. Was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented. Whose water is this? My both of them? Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Yes, sir. He said, tip finger in the water. Look at it. One drink. He didn't ask for a cup. Right. He didn't ask for water. He said, tip of finger in the water. Not finger. One drink. So I can cool my tongue. Right. Mm -hmm. Hey, do you think hell is a place of torment? Yes, sir. Oh, yes. I guarantee you. It's a place of torment. You know, if we as Christians, I'm just going to be honest with you. If we believe the Bible, what hell is, we'd be running out of this place with gospel tracts in our, 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 our uh, 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 church and going out and telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? There is torment in hell. Well, look at this. Look at verse 27. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou would have sent him to my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place you see, the doomed in hell, they know that the hope of this world is missions. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, please send him back. I've got five brethren there that do not know this. Go and tell them so they will not come here also. Right. 
missions is the hope of the condemned. There is a story that is told of an agnostic professor who visited the Fiji Islands. The professor remarked to an elderly chief, and he said this when he got there, he told this chief, you are a great leader, chief, but it is a pity you have been taken in by those Christian missionaries. The agnostic said this, no one believes the Bible anymore. He said to the chief, people are tired of the story of Christ dying on the cross for the sins of mankind. They know better now, chief. The old chief raised his eyes and looked at that agnostic professor and he said this. You see that big rock on that mountain? And the agnostic professor said, yes. He said, on that rock is where we get people, where we used to get people that we hate and bash their heads against that rock and kill them. The agnostic looked at him and the chief looked and said, you see that big furnace over there? The agnostic said, yes, sir. He said, that used to be our oven. We would bash their heads and then put them in the furnace and cook them. And he said, let me tell you something, Mr. Professor. If it weren't for the Christ of those missionaries, you would be the next one. That's right. My goodness. That's the truth. Right. That's hope. Amen. Yes, hope of the condemned. Amen. Look at the situation of the world today. Abortion in the world. Number of abortions per year, approximately 46 million. Number of abortions per day, approximately 126,000. In America, number of abortions per year is 1.37 million. Number of abortions per day here in America, approximately 3,700. Listen, the only hope of the condemned is missions. Oswald Smith said this, we talk of the second coming when half of the world has never heard of the first. An Indian tribe my dad visited in Brazil. Oh, I'm glad he's 17. An Indian tribe my dad visited in Brazil when he went to the tribe. They were walking in the tribe and my dad saw a little hut separated from all the houses. He asked the missionary of the, the Indian tribe, he said, what's that little hut for? I might have mentioned this before here. He said, he said, preacher, that little hut, a father will get his 11-year-old daughter. This is a true story. Put her in that hut. And for one year, she lives in that hut. The only thing she can come out for is to use the restroom. She's put in that hut. My dad said, why would they do that? I said, well, for one year, he will fatten that 11-year-old girl after one year, 
He will bring her out and give her in marriage to a 40-year-old man. The reason I said this is, let me ask you something. Do you think you're better than she is? Do you think our Lord loves us more than he loves that little girl? No. We're just privileged. Yes, sir. And we can hear preaching. Yes, sir. Sir. yes, sir. We're privileged. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That little girl suffers there in that tribe. I went to an Indian tribe in Brazil. <clears throat> uh, I put in my heart that every year I would take young people to a mission field. So one year we jumped in our Volkswagen van. How many know what a Volkswagen, it's not a mini, nice, fancy day. <laughs> it's one of those that the motor's in the back and it goes and that's it. <laughs> we drove for 24 hours in that little van. Anybody want to go with us? <laughs> uh, I don't want to. <laughs> we drove and when we arrived to the, we, we passed through one uh, Indian tribe. It's called Guarani. And uh, everybody got out of the van. Little, little Indian boys were playing around and when I got out of the van, oh, goodness. oh boy, oh, they had fun. They started looking at each other and sticking their stomach out. And they'd come running and hit each other in the stomach. And I got close to them and put my stomach out. And I acted like I was going to do it. And they took off. <laughs> We traveled more and went to an Indian tribe and we were so tired. Our young people were so tired, but so excited. We went and saw part of the Indian tribe and literally they live in huts. They live in huts and they'll have a front porch and their front porch will come down to about right here. So big animals can't come in. Well, big Terrell couldn't come in. <laughs> I mean, I hit my head so strong in the morning. And we went, and that night, we missionary said, why don't y'all get some rest? And I said, okay. Next day, we got up rested and the missionary came in and he said brother Terrell he said uh, one of the babies of the tribe six days old passed away and the parents want you to preach his funeral well as my dad would always said you never lose an opportunity to preach I was scared to death We went into a little wooden hut with wooden seats, no back, just rough seats. Had about 10 rows here, 10 rows on this side. But the church itself was probably the size of this right here. And they had windows that opened up. And there were probably 10 to 15 young people hanging in the windows to see what was going on. So I looked at our girls and I said, girls, I said, why don't you take the little kids outside? 
and tell them our little story. And our girls were such great girls. They said, yes, sir, Pastor, we will. So they got all the kids together, went out, told a story about Jesus and this Amen. and that. And I stood beside a small, quiet casket. The parents were not saved. During my message, the mother would leave the hut. She would go out into the woods and this is literally what would happen. She would scream loud for us. And it was so sad. She would come in. The dad would get up and go out. Go out into the woods and scream. I asked the preacher, I said, after, I said, what, what were they doing? Well, they're going out and screaming out to their gods to help that little baby. Does God love us more than he does that little Indian tribe? You know, it, it, it bothers me, preacher. It bothers me. That we don't have more young people surrendering to the mission field. It bothers me bad. In fact, Pastor Logan said, Brother Terrell, he told me Friday, he came in my office. He said, Brother Terrell, <coughs> let's pray. Let's start a missions major at Tabernacle. I said, okay. bothers me. So he told me, Pastor Logan said, once a week, pick a day, and that day is going to be Missions Emphasis Day at Tabernacle Baptist College. And I scheduled missionaries in. They came in. This semester is going to be every Tuesday missionaries are going to come in. I've given them subjects that they should deal on with the young people. But one day my wife was taking an English course and there was a young boy in, in her class, Blake. He said, uh, Miss Rose, is Brother Rose here tonight? And my wife said, no, he's not here tonight. He said, uh, could you tell him I need to talk to him? And she said, sure, I'll tell him. So Thursday, which was our missions emphasis night, he came up and I said, Blake, after service can we meet and we'll talk? He said, yes, sir. And you need to know, Blake, he is tender. I mean, you can hardly look into his face and him look at you. He's so too. We went in the room. He said, Brother Terrell, he said, I wanted to be the first. You were the first one to know. He said, last November, during one of the mission sessions, there in chapel, there used to be a map. And he said, I looked that map and it showed India and he said preacher God's called me to go to India boy did you hear that mm. me and pastor we text a lot I almost text him immediately because I was so thrilled why you know why because mission is the hope of the condemned. Missions is the heart of Christ. But look at last week. I've got eight minutes and I will be done. Missions is the health of the church. Amen. 
Mark 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What was the last command of his lips? Must have been one of the deepest and dearest desires of his heart. A man said this, Only as the church fulfills her missionary obligation... <coughs> Does she justify her existence? Existence. Another man said this, the mission of the church is missions. Another man said the best remedy of a sick church is to put it on a missionary diet. I never forget Dr. Simon. When the budget was tight, money at Tabernacle was not doing good. Dr. Sotler would get up and say, folks, we need to pray financially for the church. We need to vote right now to take on another missionary. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Take on another missionary. You see, the best remedy of a sick church is to put it on the missionary diet. There's a bridge built across Panther Creek in West Kentucky, Western Kentucky. It was built by the United States government. It was a source of pride for Western Kentucky and a symbol of recovery to Western Kentucky. Today, years later have gone by. The bridge looks as new as the day in which it was built. Because there is no road leading to and from. You see, a bridge that doesn't carry traffic is a bridge in name only. That's right. What are you trying to say, preacher? A church that does not go with the gospel is a church in name only. Wow. We're a bridge. Church to the world to reach the world. You know, Coca Cola seems to be everywhere. They say I've never been there to see that, but they say when man touched the moon, there was a sign that said, "Drink Coca Cola." I don't know. They say. But you know what? They say at the big headquarters of Coca-Cola, I don't know if it's still there or not, but they said that this used to be there. They had a motto at the headquarters of Coca-Cola. And this was their motto. Think globally, but act. We are debtors. We are debtors. Hudson Taylor said this. God isn't looking for people of great faith, but for individuals ready to follow him. Follow him. Preacher, why are you preaching this message? I'll tell you why. I've known men that have known the glory. Yes. Men like my dad served in Brazil over 50 years. Men like Melvin Vaughn served in Brazil for many years. Brother L, 
Woodhurst in Guam had to come home because his wife has dementia. Margaret Stringer. Yes, sir. Many others. But you know what? I seem to notice that nobody is picking up their torch. Right. To keep going. They're having to just lay their torch down and hope that somebody will pick it up. C.T. Studd said this, some, way, uh, some wish to live within the sound of a chapel bell. I wish to run a rescue mission within a yard of hell. One of the hardest things for me to do was leave where my heart is. Because missions is the heart of Christ. Because missions is the hope of the condemned. And brethren, missions is the health of the church. May God give us a greater vision for missions. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to be able to preach. Lord, would you help Christians to come and kneel down and say, Lord, give me a greater vision. I need greater vision. There might be some young people that kneel down and say, Lord, I'm willing to go wherever you want me to go. He might never leave this church and serve here but being willing to go so others can hear about the hope. God, would you please speak to us with our heads bowed and our eyes closed. Is there any Christian here to say, Brother Terrell, I need pastor said a couple weeks ago and I read, wrote it down he said God, God does not want us in the comfort zone he wants us in the end zones a lot of times us Christians we've got to the point we're in the comfort zone God wants us in the end zone Working. how many Christians can Get up from your place. Come to this altar and say, Lord, if you come, that doesn't mean you're going to a mission field, but just give you a greater vision. But what's God's heart? Is there anybody that would come as they play? If not, the pastor's going to come.
those commissions. I'll be honest with you, my hands up. If I'm going to lead this church, I need a greater vision for God. I need God to allow me to see the field for what it is. The fields are wide already on the harvest.
suspicious. We, a lot of times we don't even want to go to our next door neighbor and tell them about Jesus. We have the young people that don't go to days of journey. People like willing to travel thousands of miles. That breaks my heart. I want God to help me to be more of a missionary myself. I want God to put that burden on my heart because it's all his. He's not willing that any should perish. But that all I'm so thankful now for the word that we heard from God. Amen. As God spoke through his preacher, thank God for the truth of his word. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to have everybody stand across the building this evening. We're going to close in a word of prayer. I trust that you will allow the Lord to speak to your heart. I trust that we have this time of this time of invitation. That, that you did the business with the Lord that you needed to. If not, I'll make this promise to you. I'm going to be one of the last ones to leave this evening. And uh, if you need if you need some help, if you need somebody to give you some help, I, I, I would be so joyed if, if you'd come and allow me to help you get, get closer to the Lord or pray with you about something. Whatever need there may be, I'd love to be able to be able to help you with that, be able to pray with you and for you this evening. Amen. Let's go pray it and asking God to have his will and his way. And make sure you let the preacher know on the way out the door as you leave this evening. Make sure you let, let Brother Rose and Miss Adriana know how much you're thankful for them being here this evening. Let Brother Rose know how much you appreciated the message. Amen. I, I appreciate a, a preacher that preaches the burden of his heart. But then I, I, I believe it was very honest, very evident rather this evening that he, he preached with a touch of the power of God on him tonight, amen. I felt God all over him while he preached. I praise the Lord for that, amen. Let's pray for this family, and you let them know you're thankful for them on the way out the door. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord God, for this evening. Lord God, my heart is so encouraged tonight. And Lord, I, only, I can only rejoice in you for that. Lord, thank you so much for Brother Rose and his precious wife being here with us this evening. And Lord God, the message that you brought to our heart out of 2 Peter 3, 9. Father, we, we thank you for the reminder that missions is the heart of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the reminder that missions is the hope of the condemned and that missions is the health of the church. Father, we pray that you would burn these truths in our mind and in our heart. Lord, I pray, God, they find the seed of the word of God would find a lodging place, and I pray, God, that there would be fruit that remains from what you did in our midst tonight. Lord God, that what, what we saw tonight was you speaking in the tenderness of the hour to the hearts of your people and convincing us that what the Bible says is true and of the great need that we have to be a soul-winning station in a missionary-sending organization. Lord God, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done tonight. We can say how much we love you all night and how thankful we are for what you've done all night. And Father, I pray that you'd help us to be thankful for it all the way till we get to eternity, where for time and eternity we can spend forever. Lord God, giving you the praise and the honor and the glory that's due unto your name. Lord, we pray, God, that you would touch this precious family. Lord, as they travel up the roads, Lord, I pray, dear God, that you bless them every meeting they go to, every work they endeavor to do, uh, Lord, through Tabernacle Baptist Missions. Lord God, we pray that you would provide the, the funds that they need for their trips. Father, I pray, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that you would just provide every need. And Lord God, give them leadership and direction. Lord God, I pray for power upon their lives, Lord, as they do what you've called them to do. Lord God, as they go to the mission field in October, but we pray, dear God, that you'd make it such a fruitful trip for them. And Lord God, that you would use them beyond themselves in a way that only God can use a person. But we pray, God, for, for Brother Rose's parents. Lord God, that you would touch them in their body. Lord, give them strength. Lord God, we pray <clears throat> for Brother Rose's uh, mom. Lord, as she has been struggling with that knee, Lord God, we pray that you would just give her physical healing and God, give her strength. Lord God, as only you can answer the need according to your will. Have your will and way. Touch these dear saints of God that have so faithfully, Lord, for half a century given their life for the cause of Christ. Lord God, we know that when it comes time 
Uh, Lord God, when it comes to the end of the journey, Lord, even after, uh, Lord, the mission work is no longer physically possible, Lord God, I trust that you'll honor the work that they've given their life to you for. And Lord God, I pray that you would bless them with every blessing that you can send their way because when, when you said go, they didn't say no, but they said yes. Lord God, thank you, Lord, for those that say, here I am, Lord, send me. Have your willing way with the results of this service. Touch each and every one as we depart. Lord, bless these, my friends and family here at Beacon Baptist Church. Lord God, I pray that you would help us to shine brightly for the cause of Christ. And Lord God, to have more zeal and more passion to share the gospel with the world. Father, have your willing way. We'll thank you for what, what you do. In Jesus Christ's name we pray.